Before we begin with the episode, I just want to give a shout out to an awesome group on Facebook called Feudal Japanese Miniature Wargaming. Please check them out, not only if you are a fan of miniature wargaming, but simply a fan of feudal Japanese history in general. It's truly amazing to see many of the beautifully crafted scenarios and battles that the talented people of this group have authentically put together. Now, with that said, let's get on to the video. In the last episode, the Shogun was assassinated, leaving the Shogunate in utter shambles. And to the west, the Mori clan would finally crush their Imago rivals, leading to complete authority over the Chugoku region. Now, as Oda Nobunaga finds himself a new rising power, he will lead his clan to war against his old enemies, the Saito of Mino province. The victory Oda Nobunaga had won at Okehezama in 1560 came as a complete shock, not only to all the clans in eastern Japan, but most likely to Nobunaga himself. Who could have ever guessed that such a small force would overcome such a massive adversary? For now, Nobunaga was considered a first-rate daimyo, and the Oda were becoming more well-known throughout the land. And if it was only luck that had won him his victory against the Imagawa at Okehezama in 1560, his luck would not end there, as one year later in 1561, his old enemy, the daimyo Saito Yoshitatsu of neighboring Mino province, died, leaving the Saito clan in the hands of his teenage son, Saito Tatsuoki. With Nobunaga's eastern border now secure, Thanks to a new alliance between the Oda and the soon-to-be independent Matsudaira clan of Mikawa, he felt confident leading his army immediately into Mino province in the wake of Yoshitatsu's death. Reacting quickly to Nobunaga's invasion, Tatsuoki responded by setting out from his own power base at Tsunomata and meeting the Oda army in the open at Moribe. With Nobunaga's army twice the size of Tatsuoki's, he was able to quickly secure victory, routing Tatsuoki and the remaining Saito forces from the field. With this triumph, the unopposed Oda continued on to firmly secure Tsunomata from the Saito. However, in the coming weeks, as Nobunaga attempted to secure the area around Tsunomata, Tatsuoki would strike out again, attacking a detachment of Oda soldiers. Nobunaga rushed out from Tsunomata to aid his forces, resulting in the short battle of Jushijo, where Nobunaga would once again crush the Saito. Having achieved a successful campaign, seizing Tsunomata and various Saito forts within Mino province, Nobunaga decided to return home to Owari. Of course, this was only the beginning, as he wished to truly capture the majority of the province in time. Over the course of the next several years, the Oda and Saito remained at war, and by 1563 we can see that Nobunaga decided to move his power base up to the recently constructed Komaki Castle to better manage his forces. However, it is here we can also see the legend of Toyotomi Hideyoshi begin to grow. Hideyoshi, who had formerly been an Ashigaru known as Tokichiro, had over time risen his reputation with his lord Nobunaga. Not only was Hideyoshi seen as cunning, but also strategically gifted. After the capture of Tsunomata, Hideyoshi had been placed in charge of repairs to the castle, although Hideyoshi would take the initiative to aid the war effort. Using an excess of supplies he had from the restoration of Tsunomata, Hideyoshi quickly built a fake castle near the war front, an act which caught the Saito completely off guard by how rapidly it had been constructed causing their morale to severely fall. As the war went on, the Oda eventually captured the new Saito stronghold of Inabeyama in 1564, before Tatsuoki reclaimed it one year later in 1565. And although the war had devolved into a rough tug of war over the land, the Oda generally held the advantage, 
For the most part, things were going smoothly for the Oda, until another confrontation arose with the Azai clan of Umi province. Daimyo Azai Nagamasa had also recently taken up hostilities against the Saito in aims to hopefully claim territory in Mino. However, Nobunaga desired full control over all of Mino, thus he needed to act quickly. He began negotiations with the Azai clan and finally came to an agreement by offering the marriage of his sister Oichi to Nagamasa. Nagamasa would accept the proposal and thus the Oda and Azai became linked through marriage. Of course, this also caused Nagamasa to back off so that Nobunaga could focus on securing Mino. Nobunaga's next major plan of action against the Saito lay in the realm of sly negotiations. With the Saito clan appearing increasingly weak, Nobunaga began discourse with many notable Saito clan retainers, managing to sway many of them over to his side, the winning side. In fact, it is also suspected that Hideyoshi had a large role to play in these negotiations as well. By 1567, Nobunaga felt confident enough to attack into Mino once again, this time in aims to secure the entire province and wipe out the Saito clan once and for all. His new campaign began as well as his last, as Oda forces swept through the territory, seizing Saito possessions. Although the true goal was the recapture of the last Saito stronghold, Inabayama Castle. And once again, Hideyoshi would play a large role in the final battle for control of Mino province. Having now earned the trust of Nobunaga, Hideyoshi suggested a plan to quickly secure Inabayama from its stubborn defenders. He and a small group of soldiers would scale over Mount Inaba to attack the garrison from inside, causing chaos and opening the gates for the main Oda assault. Once the sneak attack was in full effect, his men would wave their water gourds atop their spears to signal the Oda army below, letting them know the time to strike was now. Nobunaga agreed, and the attack went off a perfect success. With the fall of Inabayama, the Saito were truly defeated. Mino was now in the hands of Nobunaga. And now, due to his exceptional skill, Hideyoshi was promoted to that of a full samurai and allowed to finally take a true family name. He chose the name Hashiba, a combination of the names of two other top Oda commanders, Niwa Nagahide and Shibata Katsuhie. Thus, he would now be known as Hashiba Hideyoshi. So, what can we learn? After the death of Saito Yoshitatsu, Oda Nobunaga sought to seize the opportunity and strike into Mino province. His first campaign would be a success, capturing Sunomata and the surrounding area. Although, he then had to contend with the Azai, who were eager to invade Mino as well. Nobunaga would finally ease tension by marrying his sister to the daimyo of the Azai, allowing him to then refocus his efforts on the capture of the province. It would be then that Hideyoshi would come to shine, as he would work diligently to help bring the Oda clan victory. By 1567, Nobunaga had defeated the Saito clan and seized Mino, while Hideyoshi would advance his status and come to be known as Hashiba Hideyoshi. In the next episode, a member of the Ashikaga family will arrive on Nobunaga's doorstep with a proposition to take the capital and seize the country. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.